Hello, Comanche Shenan here from the Topic of the Week video, and this week I'm going to be talking about the modern Star Trek movies. This week's topic was submitted by Tumblr Anon, and their topic is, what is your opinion of the newer Star Trek movies? Well, overall I would say it's probably more of a mixed bag. Now, I will admit I'm not like a big Star Trek guy. I mean, I mean, I grew up watching Star Trek. I mean, I watched a lot of The Next Generations. I watched Voyager. I watched that that Enterprise show with Scott Bakula. Uh, but overall, I would say that I'm not like into Star Trek. So I don't really have like super super deep investment with the franchise overall. I have far more interest in Star Wars. But. I would say when I was watching the the first one, the 2009 movie, it was, I thought it was alright. Nothing too spectacular, but I don't really, like, may, maybe this is different for people who are, like, longtime fans of the series. And I, and I will concede that as someone who's not, like, deeply invested, but I didn't find anything to be, like, deeply angry about to consider it to have destroyed Star Trek. Or, I, I, I always thought that was a little hyperbolic. But... I did have some issues with the movie. Like, okay. It establishes its own timeline because of the time travel from Nero. Now, the way I had always kind of seen this was this was like DBZ. And that, like, he went back in time and it creates an entirely another time timeline. Or even that they were, like, it time traveled and crossed into another dimension because, like, the, the ages of the characters you know, or different. I mean, there could be plenty of stuff. Uh, I mean, th th there's plenty. This is Star Trek. There's been always so many wacky things going on. I mean, shoot, like, <laughs> you have, like, beings like Q who have all these crazy powers. So there's a lot of wacky stuff that can go on in Star Trek. So that kind of stuff never really bothered me. Uh, but I did find the part where they killed Spock's mom and they destroyed the planet. Was it Vulcan? Yeah, I think it was. I thought I've always I kind of felt like that was a a bit unnecessary. I don't know. I just and and the fact that they were like, well, since the planet's destroyed, then most Vulcans are dead. I'm like, really? Well, wouldn't wouldn't a species like the Vulcans have people all over the place? Like, I, I don't know. It feels like it, that just feels a little weird, weird to me. I mean, I don't know if there's any canonical explanation with that. But it, it it always just kind of felt a little off to me. It felt like killing Spock's mom was... It felt like that was just there for Kirk to provoke him with later on. And I felt like, well, especially if he lost his planet, that's, that's kind of enough. You don't need to kill his mom, too. Or if you kill his mom, you don't need to destroy the planet. I mean, shoot, just having the planet attacked or having his mom really hurt or put into a coma or whatever... I mean, I feel like there's a lot of stuff that they could have done without resorting to killing them. I mean, and I mean, it all happens because of Nero, and I find Nero to be an extremely weak villain. I was never a big fan of Nero as a character because he always just kind of baffled me. Like, they point out some of the big oddities in his plans because he wants revenge, because his planet in the future was Romulus. I think so. Again, I'm not, like, a huge Star Trek guy. And it's actually been kind of a while since I've seen all of the movies. But he wants revenge because his planet was d destroyed because of stuff going on in the future. So, he blames Spock, and he wants to make Spock suffer. Okay, I, I understand the basics of this. But when you go back in time like this, he could have just warned the Romulans... Rom I was it Romulans? I, I always get the species mixed up. I always mix up the Vulcans and the Romulans. But he could have just gone back to his home planet and warned them. In fact, maybe he could have waited for Spock. Maybe he would have had to have waited for Spock for some real proof. Maybe he could go to... I'm okay, maybe he doesn't, he doesn't trust Starfleet and all, but... You know, he could have done something except just sit and wait for 20 years or however long it was to for Spock to show up just so that he can make him suffer that always felt really odd to me now apparently I think there are like some comic books or something that explain Nero's character a little bit better 
But I'm not going to out. I'm not going to outside media in order to understand the fundamental motivations of the main villain. This isn't a little bit. This isn't just one part of the story. The entire story of the first movie is built on that. I mean, and th this is one of my biggest problems: is the whole character of Nero. What the hell was he doing for those twenty-something years? Sitting around waiting, like it just. There's a lot of time, and there was a lot of things that really should have been addressed, but it felt like there were some parts that just weren't as well thought out. I mean, overall, I mean, it, it's kind of fine. It's fine for like a beginning of a new like series of movies, and overall, it's fine in that regard. But I don't consider it all that great. Going into Into Darkness, I find it. Odd. A lot of people really hate Into Darkness. I loved Into Darkness. Yes, it's b the equivalent to The Wrath of Khan. But I don't really see what the problem is with that. I mean, The Wrath of Khan was the second Star Trek movie before, so of course the second movie in this new series is based on The Wrath of Khan. And it's still pretty different. It's very different from The Wrath of Khan. There are obvious parallels, of course. I mean, stuff with... with uh, with Khan wanting revenge, uh, you had... I mean, the, the whole scene where Kirk dies and Spock does the Khan, which is a reverse of where Kirk did the Khan in the original, which I thought was neat. I mean, I actually watched The Wrath of Khan not too long before the movie came out. And I mean, we all knew that John Harrison, we all knew that was Khan. Benedict Cumberbatch was obviously Khan, and he did a fantastic job. I know he doesn't really look like Ricardo Montalban, but I felt like he did a good job. I mean, and this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, I'd probably say that this is also another dimension. I that that just always felt like an easier explanation than trying to justify all of the the minute changes across all of the the different timelines from the ages and stuff. But overall, I just felt like. Into Darkness was a decent movie. I mean, I haven't watched it in a while. I, should, I probably should we watch it sometime. But I liked it. I liked the. I liked seeing like Khan be superhuman. I mean, you like to really get to see that kind of stuff. I thought that was actually really neat. I liked the. Um, I liked uh, introducing uh, Carol Marcus. I liked how you get to see Kirk meeting her. I'm like, this is interesting. I like this. It's incorporating her into the story. You would add Will Marcus and his plans and all that. I mean, all that stuff. I, I thought it was neat. I liked it. And I know a lot of people give J.J. Uh, Abrams flack for mystery boxes and stuff, but honestly, I thought the myth. Like, okay, we all knew he was con, so that wasn't really that wasn't really much of a mystery. But honestly, I I liked it. I liked the the story. I thought I thought it was decent. I mean. <laughs> I don't really get the hatred, like the, the the venomous hatred that that movie rips from gets from people. And I mean, I don't know. It, I I just don't get it. Yeah, it's like Wrath of Khan a lot. Uh, is that a good thing? I mean, if we're supposed to be having like, if you're going to be copying something, you might want to do the best one. And it's not even like a one shot, one for one copy. And it's not like The Force Awakens, which I've seen a lot of people compare. These new movies and stuff, like The Force Awakens. But at the very least, at the very least, they bothered to create a new timeline for this instead of just being a direct sequel. And, you know, I, I honestly think it works. I, I think Into Darkness works. I thought it was actually really enjoyable as a movie. Even the part where they killed Pike didn't bother me. And be, anyone who knows me would know that I don't like deaths, and I actually really liked... Uh, Admiral Pike, and when he died, I was like, I don't know, it, it felt, I, it didn't upset me. I was okay with it, which is weird, because I'm normally pretty sensitive to stuff like that. But overall, Into Darkness, I, I thought it was interesting. I liked seeing uh, Kirk interact with Spock, or Kirk interact with Khan and stuff. And I mean, I remember when I was watching the trailers, and he's like, I am better. And Kirk's like, what? And he's like, and Khan's like, at everything. And I'm like, yeah, that's Khan, of course. Duh. 
I mean, I, I did kind of like the way they kind of tied in a little of the old Spock that he just, he kind of called in and he's like, uh, yeah, uh, Khan, yeah, he's dangerous. <laughs> you know, and I mean, I, I actually kind of like the part where they actually had them working with Khan because for, for at least for a little bit, they actually had a common enemy. And I thought it was interesting. And I think uh, very importantly, at the very end where they established that Carol Marcus joins the crew, and I'm like, this is cool. I'd like to see it. So I, I was thinking, I can't wait to see more of her and Kirk interacting if they like officially get together. Like, you know, like they, they had a son in the original, you know, timeline. Then we get to Beyond. I hate Beyond. It is a dumpster fire garbage movie. It is just nothing but action schlock. And I cannot for the life of me understand why that movie gets praised to high heavens. I've even seen some people, even like big Star Trek fans, claim it's the best Star Trek movie. What? It's not even a good movie itself. It's just... Awful. I mean, one thing I noticed immediately was the fact that Carol's just gone. She joined the crew and they were going on their five-year mission. And she's just gone? I'm, I'm, that probably didn't get Alice Eve back. But you couldn't even bother to come up with some explanation? Or n nothing of really any substance? Like, wh why would she be gone? It's just... Ugh. And the movie was frustrating. You had that stupid swarm thing destroying the Enterprise, and then you had the villain. Ugh, the villain was stupid. The whole movie just kind of felt like it was just kind of, well, we don't really know what we're doing, so we're just getting to the next action scene. And it was so weird. What's so weird is I see so many people who criticize the 2009 Star Trek movie and Into Darkness for just being action schlock. But then Beyond actually is action schlock. Which is a, a mediocre at best story. And it feels like it's just kind of going, well, we don't really know what we're doing. And we're just, so let's just throw some plot twists in out of nowhere. I can't believe I watched this I was forced to watch this movie twice. And it pissed me off. Like, I was thinking maybe I missed something. And I watched it a second time. And I still hated it. The only thing, the only thing I liked about this movie was that new character. I can never remember her name, but the, the albino alien girl. The one who hung out with Scotty the whole movie. I liked her. I thought she was good. I actually liked her interactions with Scotty. And the scenes with her and him were probably some of the only parts of the movie that I actually enjoyed at all. But overall, it was just bad. They wasted the villain. I just... And it felt like they were just, didn't really know what they were doing with the story. At least with Into Darkness, it felt like they knew what they were doing. Even if they were pulling elements from The Wrath of Khan. At the very least, it felt like they were writing a story. It felt like it had some kind of purpose. There was a change in the status quo from beginning to end. And it makes sense. And it's setting up future stories. And then the Beyond just goes, I don't know, buy Enterprise. It just... Uh, I, I know I've probably forgotten more issues with the movie, but I do not want to rewatch Beyond. It is garbage. I mean, frankly, it would have... It, that killed any interest. Like, I know there was rumors of, like, a fourth Star Trek movie on the new timeline, but Beyond killed any interest I had in it. Just, it, it just... It's so awful. I mean, I'm content just to say that things ended at the end of Into Darkness. Because Beyond was an absolute atrocity. So yeah, when I said mixed bag, there's a pretty mixed bag. The first movie was, eh, alright. I'm kind of middle of the road on it. Not, I don't really love it, but I don't really hate it. There's, I have some issues with it, which I outlined. I mean, there are some things that I did like. I liked seeing, you know, Kirk, you know, join and become, you know, get the Enterprise. I liked seeing, uh, I liked seeing them doing the Kobayashi Maru test because that's something that's mentioned before, but you don't see Kirk taking it. And I thought that was actually really interesting. <clears throat> and the casting is actually really well. I mean, 
for the, you know, doing the first movie when they were recasting, you know, for the iconic roles. I thought they all did a really good job in that. And even Into Darkness was also really well. I mean, I know the, the casting of Benedict Cumberbatch was seen as really weird, but Benedict Cumberbatch is a great actor, and I think he pulled the role off pretty well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the first movie was, it was decent. Uh, it had a weak villain that really dragged the movie down, and sometimes it was going a little too far in the dramatics, where I felt like it's just like, okay, all right, I get it. The second movie, In the Darkness, I thought was really good. It actually had a much stronger villain. It, act it felt like it had a better story overall. And... I felt like it actually handled twists better. I mean, the, the whole con stuff doesn't, but uh, the, the twist that you actually had all of the other people, of Khan's people, that, uh, you know, they were alive and Khan was trying to save them. You know, I actually felt a little more sympathy for Khan in this than I did in, the, in um, Wrath of Khan. Not because Wrath of Khan is a bad movie. I Of all the old Star Trek movies that I've seen, I love Wrath of Khan the most because I, I think it actually genuinely is the best one. But I, this is a different approach to Khan's character. And Khan survives. They just put him back into stasis. I'm like, that's kind of interesting. It's like keep leaving the door open for him to come back as a character. And I didn't like how they managed to save all of his people. I'm like, I don't know, I like that. I, I like that. It, it had a good, it had a nice, happy ending. And honestly, I just really enjoyed uh, Into Darkness. Beyond was awful. The villain was bland. The story was stupid. It just, uh, thinking about it gives me a headache. Ugh. You know, and I know I had a million more issues. I, uh, I would say I should uh, should have rewatched it before I made this video, but I do not want to rewatch Beyond. I was bored that entire movie. I watched it twice, and I was even more bored the second time. Even though it's supposed to be more actiony, and it felt like it it had a lot of just action scenes that were there just to be there, and I'm like. At least the action in the first two movies was good. I liked the action. That was also good. And then the Beyond is just like, look, guys, we're action-y. Like, I thought it was very weak. And frankly, just, I mean, the only, the, okay, I will give one one part that I that I thought was kind of decent. You know, the, the fact that old Spock died because, well, Leonard Neboy died. And they, they pull up a picture of, like, the old Enterprise crew. But you know what you, you know what they, they, they should have done? And I said this before, and I said this before the movie came out, that they should have opened up with, you know, old Spock's death. If he's dead, if he dies, then just have the crew of the Enterprise attending his funeral. You... It just feels like that would have been... If you want to make an emotional scene out of this, like... Look, it's sad that Leonard Nimoy died. But if you want to do something with this, then actually do something with it. Don't just go, oh yeah, he died. Especially because they stopped by that, that space station thingy anyway. So it's just like, well, it's not like they couldn't just stop and do something with it. I don't know. I just, I mean, I get that, that overall is a minor nitpick considering how much of a mess the movie is. Ugh. <sighs> Pardon me, is tempted to rewatch the movie and then make a more coherent breakdown of what didn't work, but oof. I don't want to watch that movie a third time. No. I think I'm done talking about this. So, yeah, overall, first movie, alright. Second movie, great. Third movie, trash. And that's really all I have to say right now. So, if you want to submit a topic to me, you can either comment down below if you're on YouTube, if you're on Tumblr, send me an ask with topic colon and whatever topic you want me to talk about. Or if you're on the Discord, you can go into the topic submissions channel and submit a topic there. Just make sure to follow the rules that will be posting down below. If you want to watch last week's topic video, you can check that out here. If you want to watch next week's topic video, you can check that out here. I want to get that done. So, what are your thoughts on the new Star Trek movies? Love them? Hate them? Please comment below. 
and thank you for watching.